Okay, hello everybody. I'm Kevin May from Focuswire. It's uh, number seven of our pundit shows here at the Focusrite conference, um, where we get uh, delegates or experts from the industry, we can call you as well, to discuss matters of what have been going on next door on centre stage. So we'll be hearing from Valen, Stephen and Lorraine. Um, we'll come to you first, Lorraine, because you, you were moderating yesterday on the centre stage. Up until about two o'clock yesterday, all the, and we're going to come back to the conversation, but up until that point, the conversation was about something else. And then in the afternoon, everybody seemed to be talking about what had been going on with the stock prices with Trip, with Expedia generally and Priceline over the last 24 hours and what that actually meant. Now, you asked a question to your panellists, Douglas asked a question to his panellists and, and like, as we were saying earlier, like good Wall Street CEOs, they said the right thing, oh. as you would do. What do you think's going on? Well, you know, I do agree partly with the fact, obviously, the market's going to go up and down and not to be yep. hysterical about it because we've been yep. watching this for a long time. And, and, you know, if you remember how many years ago when, you know, Priceline was in the tank and we thought it was going to get acquired and now look where they are, that, where yep. they are. So we have to put that in perspective. But, of course, it wasn't until I chatted with Steve that we, we got one of those public, big public online travel companies on stage that we could start that conversation because it was a really rough week. And... You know, particularly, I think, for Trip, And I, I think for Expedia and Priceline, I, I think that the market has been expecting this double-digit growth. We've been seeing this soaring growth for so many years. So the expectation is always that you're going to be doing like 20%, 25%. So even though we're still seeing double-digit growth for Expedia and Priceline, maybe now for Expedia it's 11%. So, you know, it's not that huge. So I think the market's reacting to the fact that, yes, there is some sort of perhaps market, um, and it's certainly not saturation, but some maturity that we're seeing, particularly yeah. in the U.S. market, and, and slower growth perhaps in some of the new opportunities like China. Yeah, so they, not for us to talk about jittery investors and things like that, but you know, you, what you're saying is that we may be get, going from double digit growth slowly into single digit growth, and this is just the market maturing? In some markets, I mean other markets, like okay. emerging markets, you're still gonna see double, Double-digit right. growth, so but in the, glo the global picture for a global company, that has an effect on the overall growth. Right? Exactly, and and good hoteliers would make the argument that uh, they're gaining ground on, especially in the the distribution, um, who, direct distribution versus third-party distribution. So hoteliers may make the claim that you know they're becoming more sophisticated as retailers, and therefore fighting back against the retail giants that are the the big OTAs right. and gaining some ground. I don't know. I, I don't know if um, yeah. if Trip and Priceline would agree with that, but I can well, see I mean, hoteliers making that argument. Uh, and you work with hoteliers with Nor One, so um, are they becoming more sophisticated with what they're trying to do to the extent that it is having an impact on the way they use third-party distribution? They're spending a lot of money on their loyalty programs and on other other types of rates that allow them to, to provide preferential rates and treatments to members of the loyalty program, their better guests, as a way to drive value and drive and change behavior. So I would say they're, they're getting more sophisticated. They have good teachers at Priceline and, and Expedia and yeah. you know, sort of retailing best, merchandising best practices. Okay, Steve? Uh, you know, I, I, I don't know enough about the stocks to really know what would be causing that. My, my initial thought when I first saw it was that, the, that all those large companies have taken some risks in the last six months in terms of new initiatives with Trip in their instant booking and Expedia with their technology expansions and stuff. And you know, perhaps this is just a reflection of some of those risks not coming to bear and not performing as well as they'd hoped. And they'll probably just change direction and, and try and improve in the next quarter. So um, I think it's just a I think it's a matter of, of kind of just sitting back and looking at it over the long term and see if those recover. Yeah, I mean, sorry, go ahead. Man. No, I think the global opportunity is so big. And, and you know, we, there was so much conversation about China, and Glenn was so emphatic, like how we really need to be in China. But, and of course, they have you know, the um, this, and C trip investment, but the fact is that they're not C trip, right? So, so I think there's that sense of what's next, of what market, if it's not China, it's, it's where are we going to grow globally, because that's what the next phase needs to be. Yeah, what's your, 
Lorraine, what's your point of view on Trip and how it's evolved? Because, I mean, I, I was talking to Steve Calver here after he came off stage with you. And it's almost, he said, instant booking now is just something that we tried and it didn't meet the expectations. And they made such a big thing of it when it came four years ago, didn't they? Well, they did. And I think, honestly, it's, it's consumer perception. Mm. I think we have really trained consumers to book on Expedia and Priceline. They do have the vast majority of the market in the U.S. and really globally. And TripAdvisor has always been a place to go for reviews and for content in so general. So they just can't shift the brand I, I think they're trying now, we know, with spending up to $80 million on television ads to try to yeah. shift that perception. Yeah, the, but the, the, the user experience on Trip versus Expedia, I mean, Expedia and Priceline are retail sites. So when you yeah. get there, that's what you do, you buy. Yeah. And, and users, historically, when they go to TripAdvisor, that's not what they do. Yeah. And their user interface isn't really geared towards that. So, so it, it's, I think Lorraine's exactly right. We just can't, they, didn't, they weren't successful enough in changing user behavior. And I suppose it, it comes to the wider question, you know, TripAdvisor is doing TV advertising, it's something as old school as TV advertising, and uh, you know, there's been talk about reining in performance marketing. I mean, what does that say about the ad market in general and the way brands use it? Anyway. Yeah, first of all, I think you know, we look at Trafago, for example, the money yeah. that they have spent on, <laughs> right, on SEM. And, and it's great. I mean, it got them to where they are today. But they also but, use but, the Trafago guy to do but the same. To, and of course, they had Trafago guy, yeah. and TripAdvisor has the owl <laughs> in the robe. <laughs> so. <laughs> But um, so I think that the thinking is to kind of shift that away, not get into that hole, like let, let's try something different. And I think what's interesting is that the sense is that this, the person who comes or the, the, the guest who comes in through television is a lot more likely to transact and to convert. So I think that there's some interesting findings there. Yeah, it would be, yeah. is it a, a six month campaign or do we know how long is it for? Is this an ongoing thing? Right. Well, do they have, have any results yet even? No, well, I think it's yeah. in, they're but I think, just but I think the sense is that it's there's higher conversion. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't know compared to performance-based marketing, but but you know, they come in and they're ready to book. A lot more ready to book and a lot more yeah. uh, going right. direct to the brand. Right. And with anything, it's going to come down to the creative. So, I mean, obviously, but you know, in Europe, for example, Travago has done very, very well with its TV advertising. Whereas Kayak, quite a few years ago, right. tried to do TV advertising right. in the UK and it didn't work. Mm -hmm. And you know they never really unseated Skyscanner at all, mm -hmm. even though they're now kind of part of the same family through some weird connection through Sea Trip. <laughs> we'll come back to those kind of powerhouses in a minute. And uh, this, we're talking about what people go to TripAdvisor to do. You know, it's still seen as a review site and things like that. They bought a company that's right in your sector. Do you think they will be able to? change the perception of being just a hotel review site so that they can make Viator work for them? Well, I think attractions have always been a big part of the content play on TripAdvisor. So, but again, uh, it's the booking part. But it, it's the booking the part, yeah. yeah. And, and you know, they've gone through a, a few different partners. They started out with both Expedia and Get Your Guide. They went to, they, they did a partnership with Just Get Your Guide, and then the, now they bought Viator, and all the booking goes through Viator. So, I mean, there is, there is that issue of uh, using a single provider for, for the booking. Um, there's, you know, the, you, you don't book through to the, to the supplier's own website. So from the sp supplier perspective, it's not as good. Um, we, I've had conversations with suppliers who, you know, used to say that, that they used to get more direct bookings through TripAdvisor. Um, through their TripAdvisor rating before the, the um, booking button was added uh, for Viator, and now they're paying, of course, you know, 30% commissions on all of those bookings coming through TripAdvisor. So they don't love it, but they also, you know, really don't see that they have much of a choice because it's it's such a huge platform and they right. have to be on there. So, yeah. okay, uh, Lorraine, I th I, one of one of the interesting things that I think has emerged over the last few years, and it's only now that we see it. When you, when you take a step back and you think, and you've got these kind of two powerhouses of online travel now. So you've got the Expedia Inc. Empire, and then the Priceline Empire, which has the connection through Sea Trip, which has the connection into my, Make My Trip. So you've got these two kind of warring forces. And I, I was talking to Deep about it yesterday when he came over, and he was trying to dismiss the idea 
that it's some kind of big strategic play, but it does look like that now, doesn't it? That you've got these two forces that are going to go going up against each other over time, possibly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, well definitely. I mean, Priceline seems better positioned yeah. because of that connection, and, and Expedia, since it divested of Elong, you know, it doesn't have that real clear China vision for China yeah. that Priceline has. So, what does Expedia do about Asia Pacific? Though? Well, what does it do about Asia Pacific? Well, you know, it's got Australia and, and um, you Australia's know. Australia's a lot smaller than China, to <laughs> right. be fair, though. And they've still got the Air Asia connection, too, right. so it's, yeah. So there is some presence there, it's just not as strong as price. Okay. okay. So up until two o'clock yesterday, I, I, we sensed on all the pundit shows that we were doing and talking around that, that most of the chatter here this week had been about the return, if we can call it the return of your sector, which is tours the and activities. The tours and activities. <laughs> yeah. Episode two. <laughs> <laughs> we can start the using Star Wars time. analogies if you like. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the Death Star? I will anyway. always go there. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the Darth Vader of tours and activities? But anyway, um, uh, Redeem won a trio of awards here with the, the yeah. various uh, competitions. Um, Kluke got very heavily funded two weeks ago and then Get Your Guide got even more heavily funded about five days later. Yeah. What does that say to you about potentially something going on again? Are investors waking up on the money side? Or is something to do with the plumbing, as people keep saying? Yeah. Uh, I, you know, for eight years, um, touring activity startups have been kind of been thrown into the sausage grinder. And, <laughs> you know, and some of them have managed to make it out, and some of them haven't. And, and I think what we're seeing is that we're seeing finally uh, some really good solutions come out of the space that the rest of the industry is recognizing as really good solutions. So they're kind of looking, the pa looking past the fact that it's just a tour and activity solution and they're kind of actually seeing it as a solution that solves a problem for a really big market. Right. Because now they're kind of understanding the, the actual scale of the market. It's a big market. Yeah. You know, when it was eight years ago and people didn't know how big the market was, it was like, well, so paper voucher redemption, whatever, big right. deal, right? Well, it's I mean, been sized, isn't it? Yes, you, you, well, the yeah. industry loves a challenge, first of all. Yeah. So yes, it's been sized, about 150 billion, and 2020 yeah. could be 180 billion. So you see those numbers and you're like, you know, you add that in. So we, we already have a market, a global market of 1.3 trillion for travel, and now you add in activities, and then you start to see it. So everybody likes to see those numbers get bigger, especially as you talk about, well, have we reached you know, a, a, some sort of a maturation with hotel, with air? You, know, you have to look for that next big thing. Yeah. So you know, of course, that now is the day and the time for tours and activities. And also the research showed, I believe, like 80% is still done manually. So right. yep. you, know, you have that whole opportunity right. to right. put and it I think all that online. It's an opportunity for companies like Redeem because they the, there's money now, the, 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 the value is understood, so that plumbing can in fact be addressed because the plumbing is necessary to mm -hmm. make the product distributable. Yeah. Without the plumbing, and you know, but they've got to remove some of the friction because that's one of the things that's kept it from being a viable you know, products to actually retail. It's not, it's not just huge, it's ridiculously complex as well. Isn't yeah, it? it's, oh, yeah, it's so, nice. and it's so it's fragmented. Yeah. It's so fragmented. Is it unachievable to fix that mess just because it is so complex and it's done in so many different ways, shapes, sizes, colors, whatever? Um, I, I don't think it's, it's not impossible to fix the mess. I, th I think it's just a lot of work and I think there's gonna be a lot of players that, uh, that come into the space to fix certain parts of the mess. Because the mess, that mess is not all the same. There are different aspects to that mess, right. right? And so there are going to be technologies and solutions that solve certain areas of that mess. And over time, that mess will become a little more organized. Um, but I think there's going to need to be a lot of cooperation and, and, and uh, compatibility between the systems in order for that mess to truly be solved. And there's a corollary to the hotel industry. So, you know, not all the hotel industry is distributable, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's varied. It's a, there's all sorts of product inside the hotel industry. And if we look at what happened to the hotel industry, there was a lot of plumbing that needed to be fixed before the product was easily right, distributable. Right, so we get into something that was close to your 
Perry mm. Hearts, mm. which is standards. You were at the Open Travel Alliance. You were oh. you were involved in that organisation oh. as well. He was, my, okay. he was a board member. He was yeah. the head of the board. He <laughs> but was the, my well, the point is, is that I mean, you you organise standards for other parts of the industry. I mean, yeah. does it yes. need a standardisation process? I can go all day about that. <laughs> well, you've got I a couple of minutes, but go but, ahead. <laughs> but I just had this conversation with a few people yeah, two right. nights ago yeah. that out of the blue came up and talked to me about, you know, I, I, think we're, I think we need to have some kind of standard in the tour and activity space for distribution and availability and whatever the case may be. What did you do. say? He ran I, screaming <laughs> the other <laughs> I said, thank you, after nine years of trying to push for this, we actually have some kind of consensus. So I think it may actually be the time, there seems to be an impetus to, to do that. How do, so you, we may do, how do, you, how do you do that? Though? Oh, so we, we, Stephen and I have ideas yeah, about yeah. how to, we I can, mean, and, then the, and the very first rule is, Keep it really, simple. really simple. Just really right. simple. Really simple. Okay, so uh, as we get towards the end here, Lorraine, what we've been talked about the things that have been talked about on stage and the chatter. But what have you missed hearing about? I mean, uh, I hardly heard anybody talking about airline distribution, and that world is being turned on its head at the, at the moment as well. I mean, what else yeah. would you have liked to have heard about? Yeah, yeah. We, we didn't hear. We didn't get you know the whole NDC conversation. Yeah. And we didn't get you know too much into corporate. We have you know, we tried to book the the schedule the event. There's only so much time to get in all these conversations. Yeah, I mean we had an I had an interesting conversation with uh, Philippe Chirac from Amex here mm -hmm. yesterday, and he had some very interesting things to say about the future of the GDS mm -hmm. and the future of full content agreements. Mm -hmm. um, so that was quite interesting. But you, you just don't sense that people are talking much about airlines. So what else was missing for you, maybe? Well, I think we'll get a lot more into hotel today. We have the hotel panel because we didn't really yeah. specifically talk about like what you started to yeah. chat about the impact of loyalty and really isn't making a difference. And that, that whole conversation and, you know, Douglas brought it up in the opener a little bit, but, you know, this is an, yeah. a, an ongoing debate. Right. But I still think it's fun to have and, yeah. and it's always shifting. Yeah, so we'll hear a little more about that today. Yeah, yeah there's, a, there's a lot of talk always, and it's the nature of Focus Right, but there's a lot of talk about investors and, and retailers, not a lot of talk about the individual segments other than obviously tourism activities. Um, so, yeah, I mean, but, but you know, there's a, that's, tourism activities is quite sexy right now, and airlines and hotels, not so much. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't hear as much as I thought I would about blockchain. Well, Norm's Thank goodness for get that. Get into that today. Oh, that's yeah. today. And Norm is going to explain really blockchain 101. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, think there's a, I think there's a huge misconception or misunderstanding around the technology around blockchain. Do you I think mean, I was, I was talking to a woman, a woman, I can't remember her name, Roxanne Peterson? From, yep. oh, yeah, yeah. I can't remember if she right. was travel port right. or something. But anyway, she was talking about uh, applications for blockchain in personalization and profile management. So, I mean, there's a lot of people talking about it. I don't know if they actually fully understand the, the Right, the maybe that explains why it, Steve Hafner yesterday said he didn't think it was going to be. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like the idea of, uh, it seems to me it's just, it's a, it's a technology, it will be proven viable or not. And once it's proven viable, it will be adopted as appropriate. So it, yeah. it's just, it's just, it's the, it's the ongoing uh, advance of technology or change in technology in the platforms that we use to power this industry. I mean, it's it's interesting, but we're not. This is not a technical conference, so I think Norms 101 will be really interesting. Yeah. Show us sort of how the sausage is starting to be made. Yeah. But uh, but you know, I I I I can, I'll, I lo I will love I will watch the 101, and I don't think think that I'll need any more than that. It'll be like an executive's guide to That's blockchain. Right. That's right. Really, what we need. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Everyone will leave with their heads. Idiot's guide. To, <laughs> idiot's guide to blockchain. <laughs> Uh, two mentions of sausage on the same panel, I'm impressed. So, uh, um, so do, do you sense... I think we're hungry for breakfast as well. <laughs> it's very nice, the breakfast today, actually. Uh, just quickly then, what do you think we'll be talking about next year? I mean, the hot topic. I mean, you're, you help with the programming here for this conference, so... Yeah, I've been working on our Europe program, which we will get into NDC, a little more in Direct Connect, so, so we have that yeah, set. This could be a bigger issue in Europe because it's yeah. European carriers that are yeah, now kind of flying got, the flag yeah, for Yeah, you got it. KLM involved, so you know, as, it, as that continues to roll out, that will be probably a hot topic in May. Yeah. But you can ask me what's going to be a hot topic in November. Don't you think we're still going to be talking about voice and AI? Probably. And blockchain. Yeah. And blockchain. <laughs> <laughs> Those seem to be the things there. Do we have our bingo cards ready for that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, thank you very much to uh, Val and Stephen and Lorraine.